Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. My name is Roy, aka Bloody Bananas. And in this video, we're going to cover the most common interview process, uh, the interview timeline that you will see for a data science position. Throughout my years of being a data scientist, I've gone through many, many different interviews. I've applied to many different companies. I have applied as a new grad. I have applied as an experienced data scientist looking for new opportunity. And all of these um, new opportunities that I applied for, all these jobs that I applied for, follow almost the same exact format uh, for all of them. And um, that's why I wanted to share with you all uh, what you should expect when you are, uh, after you submit your resume, and uh, what you are going to expect when they're going to start interviewing you and they're going to start the interview process so you might be prepared for whatever might come your way and uh, let's start with the first round it usually starts with an hr call so this is when the hr the recruiter will send you an email to schedule a quick phone call um, and uh, this is where you're going to talk about your general background and the recruiter is going to talk about the timeline uh, he's going to ask you about the salary expectations most of them will uh, some might not and uh, you're going to talk about the, uh, the recruiter is going to tell you about the responsibilities of the role and then you're going to introduce yourselves as well you're going to talk about your background and the responsibilities that you currently have so that the recruiter can decide or the hr can decide if there's a good fit between you guys and uh, a really good way to think about this round is think of it this as a just a conversation just where you guys should get to know each other and usually if there is no rest signal from you uh, you will get through this round very easily i don't think i've failed this round ever i'm not trying to brag or anything but i think for this round all you have to do is just really show your confidence uh, you you know that you're skilled enough to get this position and you know that the responsibilities that you currently have is very similar to the responsibilities that you're going to have at this new role. And again, you want to prepare your introductions, which we'll discuss more uh, in the next video as well on the general interview tips that I will give that I will show you guys. And also you want to ask your questions, right? Uh, a lot of times you might not be crystal clear of, of what's going on and you want to make sure that you know uh, the company well, the team well, and uh, the responsibilities that you'll be working on. So these are all the things that you want to get out of the way uh, for the very first round, which is generally um, very simplistic and it's just HR call. Uh, and then if you pass that round, you'll get to the second round, which is uh, the technical screen. Uh, there are usually two different scenarios that you could um, see coming your way. The most common case is scenario one, which includes one or two video interviews with the higher manager or more senior position team member uh, who will also um, work alongside you or or just from a different team, but also a, a more senior role of a data scientist member. Um, and the, what they're trying to do is to make sure that you are proficient in data science skills, uh, that you're going to talk about your background they're going to ask you the projects that you have done uh, that are listed on your resume. They're going to test you on SQL or perhaps Python skills. They might ask some questions on machine learning. They might ask you a product question on how to conduct A-B testing. They might ask you about just product sense in general. And we're going to cover all of these in the next couple of videos more extensively. Uh, that's one way that they, uh, how the second round could be conducted. Another scenario is also very common, uh, especially for smaller companies, from my experience, is that the smaller companies want you to do a case study or a take home assessment or a presentation on the projects that you have done in the past. What they are trying to assess here is how well you can handle a project on your own. And um, usually they want you to complete the task before the interview. And then once you have completed the task, they're going to schedule an interview with the hiring manager to discuss uh, the case study or the take home together. And a lot of the questions that we'll ask will be more open ended. Again, they're just trying to uh, gauge how you think as a data scientist and how you can handle a project on your own. And um, again, 
it's there's usually not a right or wrong, but you want to make sure that you are prepared for those uh, interviews as well. So these are two scenarios that you will generally see for the second round. And if you pass this, then you are you will get to pretty much the final round, which uh, could be virtual or on-site interview, depending on if COVID is still a thing by the time you watch this video. Generally, it includes four to six rounds of interviews with um, different team members um, that you'll be working with or more senior members from other teams that are just there to test your skills as a data scientist. You will uh, speak with potential team members that you will be working directly with. And uh, these interviews will generally be technical or beha and behavioral. You will be tested on both. So generally, there needs to be a consensus among the interviewers that you are a good fit for the role. Because if one person really disliked you and um, other people were just okay with you, uh, other people think that you are you could be a fit, but then if there's one person that really, really disagreed with everyone else and think that you are not a good fit, then generally you will not pass this round. So you really have to treat each of these uh, interviews to be very important because you really want to pass every single one of them. And um, yeah, that's a reality um, um, that you'll face because um, I've been on the panel before where uh, six of my team members interview a candidate and one person didn't like this candidate and we ended up having to let go of this uh, candidacy. Um, I've also been in a situation where I had great interviews with four out of five people and then this one interviewer I just don't know why, but maybe we just didn't click well, and um, it happens. Uh, I ended up not getting the role, uh, the job, because one person disagreed um, that I would be a good fit. Um, again, I heard that from the recruiter. Uh, maybe I didn't hear the whole story, but from my point of view as well, when I'm on the panel, uh, generally if one person disagrees and one person thinks that uh, the person is not a good fit, then they most likely won't hire you. So again, even though there are multiple interviews for this on-site interview, uh, for this final round, you wanna make sure that you are doing well for every single interviewer that I will be speaking with. Um, and uh, hopefully, if you pass this round, then you'll likely hear a call from the recruiter discussing the offer details. And that's generally the most exciting part uh, for you, but uh, probably the least exciting part for the company that you'll be leaving. Uh, but uh, yeah, hopefully this video helps you guys. Um, that concludes the video. Hopefully when you're guys applying for the jobs, you will uh, be prepared for what might be coming. And if you guys like the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more. I will discuss more of these, uh, how to prepare for these interviews more specifically for my next couple of uh, uh, videos. So definitely stay tuned for those videos. And I'll see you guys in my next video.